What's going on everyone? It's me named Jamie and today I'm going to be going over a guide on the Elite Desert Achievement Diary. The skill requirements for this guide are going to be 85 Cooking, 94 Magic, 95 Fletching, 78 Construction, 91 Thieving, and 85 Prayer. The quest requirements for this guide are the completion of Desert Treasure, the Taurus Trap, Priest in Peril, and you have to have started Iclaren's Little Helper. In your inventory, you're going to want to have two blood runes, four death runes, six water runes. You're also going to need to be on the ancient spell book to cast ice barrage. You're also going to need one dragon dart tip, one feather, one raw wild pie. And if you're not 99 cooking, you might want to bring a second just in case you burn it. Um, one desert amulet so you can teleport to Narda. I've already used my desert amulet today, so I'm going to bring a Narda teleport. One player owned house teleports, you can access a glory, otherwise you can just bring a charge glory, and one shanty pass ticket. I'm also going to bring one or two sharks just to be safe. To start this guide off, go ahead and use your glory or your player owned house teleport and get yourself over to Alcarid. Once you're there, use the shortcut or run around the building and then head south down to the shanty pass. Once you are here, use the ticket to pay the toll and go through, and then use the magic carpet ride to the Bedouin camp. Once you're here, take a few steps away from the carpet and use your dragon dart tip on your feather and that should create a dragon dart and you should have completed the first achievement diary. After this, use your amulet to teleport to Narda or use the Narda teleport I told you to bring. Once you are here, go ahead and turn on your piety and rapid heal. This is going to drain your prayer for a future achievement we have to do and next run east and then south to the clay oven at the bottom of Narda. Once you are at the clay oven, use your wild berry pie on it and you should have completed your second achievement diary. Next run directly west until you are well out of the city. Once you are well out of the city, you should see these jackals appear. Go ahead and cast Ice Barrage on them and you should have completed your third achievement of the diary. Next, continue to run west and a little bit south to the entrance of the city that is at the bottom of the desert. Once you reach the city, talk to the guards in order to be let into the city. Directly in front of you, you should see a large pyramid with four entrances. Go ahead and enter any of the four entrances. I chose the entrance closest to me and that happened to be the correct entrance for me. You know you will have entered the right entrance if a mummy appears in the center of the room. If the mummy does not appear in your room, simply exit that entrance and go pick a different entrance to go into. Once you have located the mummy, go ahead and right click him and hit start minigame. This minigame requires us to get to the 8th and final floor in order to complete this step of the diary. To get to the final floor, you need to click the traps at the start of every room in order to disarm them and pass through to the main part of the room. Once in the main part of the room, go ahead and search each door in order to unlock it. Once the door is unlocked, if you have unlocked the correct door, it will automatically take you to the next level of the pyramid when you open it. 
There will be other things inside each room of the pyramid, but simply ignore them until we get to the eighth and final room. The current room you are in is displayed on the top center of the screen in case you forget which floor you are on. Again, we are trying to get to the eighth and final floor of the pyramid, so do not stop until you get there since there is a time limit on this game. Once you are on the 8th floor, go ahead and loot the golden chest in the middle of the room and that should complete the 5th step of the diary. Next head out of the pyramid and then travel south and then west over to the altar. Make sure you have at least 85 prayer missing before you use it or else you will not complete the 6th step of the diary. If you turned on the prayers beforehand, like I said, you should be all set to use the altar when you get here. Next, teleport home to Edgeville using the home teleport and get ready to bank and set up for the KQ grind. I'm only going to be showing you guys my setup and a single trip that I did just to get you guys started on the right path. So here I am back at the GE after banking and in my inventory, I have what I like to take for a single trip to KQ. I tested out a bunch of different setups and this is the setup that I found was most efficient for me. I will be offering substitute gear advice for people who cannot afford all the stuff I have on, but overall I think this is a pretty affordable setup that I have going. So to start off, in my inventory I have one super combat potion and one divine ranging potion. This divine ranging potion can be switched to just a regular ranging potion, but I highly suggest you have at least one sip of both potions for every trip you go to do. Additionally, I have two ropes in my inventories, inventory and this is a must have for every trip you go to do because you cannot access the Kelphite Queen without two ropes. At the bottom of my inventory, I have teleport tabs to my house as well as a Draymond staff and that is so I can access the fairy ring in my house as well as to teleport out after kills. The rest of my inventory is just sharks and the six way range which I have. For the range switch, I am rocking an Armadale helmet, an Ava's assembler, a necklace of anguish, blessed dehyde tops and bottoms, and a blowpipe. The Armadale helmet can be switched for a god coif if you can't afford the Armadale helmet. The Ava's assembler can be downgraded to whatever uh, Ava's backpack you have access to. And the necklace of anguish can be switched to a fury. But if you switch the necklace of anguish to a fury, um, do not bring a torture, which is what I have on for my melee setup, because the fury will act as the necklace for both your melee setup and your range setup. I don't suggest downgrading past a blowpipe or bless dehyde. I think these are the bare minimum range things you should have for the cow fight queen. Now for my melee gear, which I already have on, I have a serp helm, a fire cape, an amulet of torture, Arada's blessing, Bando's tops and bottoms, a Bando's god sword, Barrow's gloves, dragon boots, and a brimstone ring. The brimstone ring can be switched to either a berserker ring or archer's ring depending on what you have access to, but if you can afford the brimstone ring, I highly suggest it. The Bando's tops and bottoms can be switched to a fighter torso and Barrow's legs um, if you can't afford Bando's. And the Rada's blessing can be switched to any god blessing. The torture, as I said, can be switched to a fury. The Serp helm can be switched to a Neznot helm, but if you do that, make sure you bring an anti-poison every trip. And the Bando's god sword can be downgraded to a cudgel 
and Dragon Defender, but I highly, highly suggest a Bandos God Sword because it will allow you to lower the KQ's defense level with the spec and it will act as a great uh, crush weapon for trips overall. To start off the trips, teleport to your player owned house and equip your Draymond Staff. Configure your fairy ring and enter the code BIQ. This will take you slightly outside the Kelphi lair. Use your first rope to descend into the lair and then run through the tunnels until you reach the end. At the end, you will use your second rope to descend into the Calphite Queen's area. Make sure you pot up and pray protect from mage and piety. Then turn on your spec and run across the room to the Calphite Queen. Now, because you are using the Bandos God Sword, after each attack, you should run under her to make sure she doesn't get extra hits on you. Once you have finished her melee phase, switch to your range gear and turn on rigor. Simply start ranging her until she is dead. Overall, this fight is very straightforward. However, the Kelphite Queen hits like an absolute truck, so make sure you keep your health high during the entire fight. The drop rate for the head is 1 in 128, and there is a guaranteed head drop for the Achievement Diaries at your 256th kill. Once you get your head, head over to the Taxidermis and Canifus in order to get your head stuffed. This will cost you 50k. Next, build a skill hall in your house for 15k and mount the head against the wall. To mount the head, you will need 2 mahogany planks and 2 gold leaves. Once it is mounted, you will be able to speak to the head which should complete the diaries. Once you have done that, head back to the Shanty Pass and speak with Jar. He should give you your final rewards and congratulations, you have now completed the Elite Desert Diary. Hopefully you found my guide helpful and if it was, I would greatly appreciate if you could head down below and like and subscribe. While you're down there, feel free to leave a comment about how long it took you to get the head drop so we can share in each other's misery. Lastly, I put together a Discord server to help share my future content as well as letting you guys share anything you have made. I will also be posting my Twitch notifications in there when I get my stream up and running. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, or you just want to stop by and casually chat and ask me questions, the link will be down below in the description. And with that, remember, my name is Jamie, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.